Williams, also known as Diamond Dave, the founder of the highest paid part-time job in the world, Options Training Program. Want to give you a heads up, our prices for the courses will be going up in April. So it'll be starting at the 1st of April. So if you're considering getting in, if you've been sitting back watching, uh, if you're going to wait, just be uh, prepared to pay a higher price uh, because we got to raise the price because of the rate of inflation and also because of just the cost of doing business has gone up, right? So want to give you a heads up on that. Let's go ahead and go into the weekend stock market talk. And what we're going to kind of do is give you a breakdown of what happened in the markets over the past week and what we'll kind of look for in the, in the future. Uh, this is not investment advice. Can't give you advice on how to invest, but I'm going to give you my perspective on the markets and what I'm looking for. And hopefully you can take my perspective and add it to yours if you're looking to learn more about the stock market. If you're not, you're in the wrong place. However, we have a core group of people that normally watch this show on a regular basis. So that's who we're really making this particular broadcast or this particular um, video for. Let's go ahead and get into it. So looking at Monday, March, as uh, far as our weekly reports, uh, we got trading goods on Monday. I want to see the uh, National House Price Index. I want to see the Com Com Consumer Confidence Index on Tuesday. Also want to see um, on Thursday, uh, PCE Price Index, Core PCE Price Index. I want to see all the price indexes. I want to see real disposable income, real consumer spending, and also Chicago PMI. And then on Friday, I also want to see uh, non-farm payrolls. And know we get all our uh, unemployment data. Um, what we kind of saw in the market over the last week was it getting kind of weak towards the end, even though it started off really strong. And that's something that we want to look at. And going into our seasonality, we know that we normally end off March kind of on an upswing, getting ready to go into more of a bullish trend in April. However, this is going to be very interesting because what a lot of corporations projected is that their first quarter earnings that are going to be reported in the second quarter are really not supposed to be as strong year to year. Therefore, we want to try to kind of figure out where is this bullish activity going to come from, because we're still kind of getting away from the pandemic. And one of the characteristics of the pandemic is certain companies did really, really well in the pandemic. And then they understand that their year to year is not going to be comparable because what you want is year to year growth. And what we're going to see because of the pandemic, because a lot of corporations are not going to be able to show that year to year growth. They're going to really show a year to year loss. Well, does that indicate that they're losing uh, the size of their market? Or is it that things are getting ready to stabilize and go kind of back to what their growth trends were? Right. Because really, the pandemic for a lot of corporations was a distortion uh, in their normal growth activity. And that's something we want to observe. Looking at earnings whispers, you know, we're getting towards the end of the quarter. You're not seeing anything to me that really jumps out of it. I'm going to look at Dave and Buster's. It's interesting. I've never been there and I know like where a million of them was at, but I just never went inside. Going to look at X-Ping, uh, going to look at Academy Sports, McCormick, look at Chewy, Lulamon. Uh, want to see they've sold off a lot over the past year. UiPath. And do I see anything as Walgreens, Boots Alliance, Blackberry, which was a mean play for a very long time. And that's going to pretty much be about it. You may see something in here that I'm missing. Oh, sorry, I forgot, I forgot about Cal Main Foods. Um, but I really would tell you just to really watch these companies, make sure that you're understanding the volatility around these particular earnings events. What's interesting is Friday, there's no earnings. So that's kind of how we can tell we're getting we're at the end of it. And so we're going to get these last little bit of earnings out. Paychecks is also another good one. Now, let's go into the charts, right? And this is kind of something I want to show you. So we're looking at the QQQ. We're looking at the yearly. And what do we see is that we still have that 359, 360 resistance point. OK, so over the past few days, you know, we had some bullish activity going towards that point. But what do we see on the last two days? Uh, we kept hitting that resistance point. So we opened up. Um, we opened up not the last two days on the last day. We hit that resistance point the day before that we hit it and we weren't able to get above it. So 324, we opened at 353. We closed at 359, even though it was a green day, but we hit that resistance point. And then on 325, we opened at 359, the lowest 354, and we closed again at 359. And what I want to kind of show you on the five day, if we can get to it is we 
on 324. You know, we got close to that resistance point right before we closed. OK, we came out on 325. We hit that resistance and sold off really, really bad. I wouldn't say really bad, but we sold off relatively strong. Let me rephrase my statement. Right. Then we started moving back up towards it, but we weren't able to get back to it that same day. And what we're seeing is that the market is still respecting that resistance point that we've had charted out pretty much for, I want to say, the, the past three or four months. So at one time it was a support and then we turn it into a resistance and we've seen that the market has not been able. So this is since, let's say, February, the market has not been able to get past 360. And then as it started getting close to 360, it started kind of seeing that as a wall. And what we want to try to figure out is that how come we don't have demand for the QQQ over this particular price? And what is it going to take for us to get demand over that price? Is it going to be next quarter's earnings? Right. Is that going to help us get over it? Or are we going to just stabilize around this price? Because we talked about before. Um, a lot of corporations did really well because of the specific issues around the pandemic. They may not have that same year to year growth. Therefore, we may have to reset their value. And that may be what we're looking at on the NASDAQ is just resetting the value. Now, the blue chippers are going to be fine, but even those kind of what kind of inflated because we know after the pandemic, it was pretty much the tech stocks that carried the whole market. And then we have a correlation or a redundancy in between some of the leading tech corporations in the NASDAQ, but also in the S&P. Right. Because there's such strong companies that are in both particular uh, indexes. So that's something we want to really look at. I think Google after they split is going to also go into the Dow. Right. So we want to ask ourselves, how come we don't have really have demand for this over this 360? And what is it going to take for us to get back to this 400? Or will we get back to this 400 this year or will we start moving back down towards maybe like a 300, 325? Who knows? Now, let's go into the uh, spy. Let me go to the chart real quick. So we'll go to the one year. And. We'll see the same thing. So we have, let me move it down. So we had this as a support. It was a resistance. We moved past it. So we need to get back towards past this 455 and we just haven't gotten there yet. Right. And so that's what we want to look for this next week. Do we have enough inflows, right, that are bullish enough to move us back towards this 455, right? And that's going to be coming from not only our basic consumer brands, but also our tech consumer brands, too, because, you know, like I said, there's a redundancy between the Nasdaq and also the S&P. And so we need, you know, the Apples, I believe the Microsofts, um, the Amazons to be doing well to drive both of these particular situations. And so do we have that or if not, people still going to start taking profits and selling off, which, you know, can push both these indexes down. And that's what we want to look at. What is it going to take for us to get past this 355 and get back up towards this 470? Or let's go back to the two year. Are we going to start moving back down? Because what we're looking like we're seeing is a little bit of consolidation where the market really doesn't know where to take this yet. Right. And one of the reasons is because we just had such a great run and the market can't figure out or justify a reason. Now, it may happen in the second half of this year. Right. Or and some people are predicting and this is not investment advice. That we get a run in the spring and as we get close to the midterms, we get another sell off. And that's kind of what you want to look for. However, I want to tell you is just really, you know, try to create a narrative around where you think the market is going based on what's going on in the overall economy. And then what I would do is and I would try to really figure out how that impacts the company that I'm looking at. Or if you just purely want to trade off the technicals, I would just tell you to really hammer in on the technicals. Right. Um, one of the challenges I have in trading the indexes off the technicals is that I don't really see what the story is around it. But there are people that are really, really good at this. Why? Because they just committed themselves to it. Right. However, what I like to try to do is figure out what my, my support and resistance is and then move off of that based on what I think is like the macroeconomic situation that's driving everything. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Not long because it really wasn't that volatile of a week. And going into this next week, we don't really have. Um, Anything I think may be groundbreaking, but you don't ever know because, you know, there's still a lot of conflict going on in the world. You never know what could come out that could push the market in a certain direction. Therefore, I would tell you to just make sure that you're on top of what you're supposed to be looking at and focus in on that. And what I'm going to talk about later today is how not to overtrade. 
And so I would encourage everybody to make sure you catch that broadcast live, if not catch it recorded. And really, I'm going to give you my own perspective based on myself on how not to overtrade, because that's something that really impacts a lot of traders, especially in what I think might be a slow week. And what I mean by slow week is the market may not be red, it may not be green, it be kind of like what we call yellow, where it's kind of lukewarm. And what a lot of times people try to do is they try to force something just so they can say they did something or they're very anxious to make money in the market. So they're going to try to find a play, even if a play is not necessarily there. And I want to try to show people how I avoid doing that. And they can take some of maybe what I do and implement that into their own program. If you got any questions, hit me up in the comments. Uh, really would appreciate the feedback. It's David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave. I'll talk to you later.